Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. Now today's story is actually going to be another one about survival and obviously it is a true story and it's based on the movie The Revenant. Now a lot of you I'm sure have seen this movie. It was a pretty big movie when it came out in 2015. It starred Leonardo DiCaprio and it was basically about a man that was abandoned by his fellow companions while they were out hunting. He gets attacked by a bear and then forces himself to go through some pretty crazy things in order to seek revenge on the men who abandoned him. Now, before we get into today's story, I just want to send a quick reminder to please consider subscribing if you guys enjoy the type of content that we post. We post two to three times a week and we like to talk about stuff like true crime, paranormal stories, unsolved mysteries, anything that you would consider to be creepy, strange, or just plain unusual. So if that's the type of content that you like, then please subscribe or hit the like button. It really does help us grow here on YouTube. Okay, so let's get into today's story. Now the movie was pretty crazy. I'm not sure if a lot of you guys saw this movie, but it was very intense. But there were some things that were a little bit different from the real life story versus the movie. And a lot of people seem to believe that the true story about this man is actually way more interesting than what actually happened in the movie. Now, to understand a little bit more about who this man was, we have to go back to the beginning. So the story is based on a man called Hugh Glass. Hugh was actually a fur trader, an explorer, an American hunter. He was many different things. And we'll get into a little bit more details about his life shortly. But I do want to insert a little bit of a disclaimer. There are so many different variations of this story out there. And that's because the story took place a very, very long time ago. He was born in 1783. And this story happened when he was in his early 40s. So there are quite a lot of variations about what happened. Some people say that it's been exaggerated. Some people say that there's a lot of detail that's been lost. But this story is a compilation of what I was able to find and I went through quite a lot of blog articles, a lot of newspaper articles, a lot of different resources to compile all of these facts. So like I said, he was born in 1783 in Pennsylvania. Now there's not a lot known about his early life or his childhood, but there is enough speculation, enough reason to believe that he was married at one point and he did have two children, two boys. Unfortunately, he chose to abandon his wife and his children for a more adventurous life. By the time he was 30 years old, he was actually a sea captain. And it was on one of these expeditions out to sea off of the Gulf of Texas that his boat and his crew members were actually captured by pirates. Now, the pirates had given him an option to either live or die. And they told him that if he wanted to live, then he had to become one of them. So by the age of 30, not only was he a sea captain, but he had also become a pirate, sailing the seas of the Caribbean and getting himself into quite a lot of trouble. Later on, he was actually captured by the Pawnee tribe and he had been captured with a friend of his. And unfortunately, his friend did not have a really good fate. His friend was actually killed and he was used as a sacrifice, as an offering by this tribe of Native Americans. Now Hugh's turn was coming up, but he was quick on his toes. He was a very quick thinker. And he remembered that he had something that he might be able to offer these people. He remembered that he had some cinnabar with him. Now, if you don't know what this is, this is a mineral that's actually used or was used um, for pottery. It was used for art. It was used for makeup. It's like a coppery red tint. And he presented this to the chief of the tribe and they were so impressed by it and were extremely thankful to Hugh for having presented them with this gift that they decided to spare his life and actually welcome him into the tribe. So not only did he survive this attempt on his life, he actually became an honorary Pawnee member. Now, during his time with the Pawnee tribe, he actually learned quite a lot of survival skills. He was already an experienced uh, adventurer 
but he took this opportunity to develop those skills even further. He learned how to enhance his hunting skills. He learned about lance throwing. He learned about tomahawk chopping. He even learned how to extract bone marrow from animals. So let's fast forward to 1822, and this is where the story really begins. Now, an ad was placed in the newspaper by a general named William Henry Ashley. And he was actually looking for a hundred men to ascend the Missouri River. Now, the point of this was for it to be a very large expedition for fur traders and hunters, which a lot of men did respond to. There were quite a lot of people who wanted to participate in this. Now, Hugh didn't participate in the initial one in 1822, but because he had heard many interesting and good things about how the first expedition went, he decided to join in in 1823. So off the men went on their expedition in 1823 and almost right away they had their first encounter with Native Americans. Now if you don't know there was a lot of hostility between Native Americans and English colonizers so there was a lot of tension and they just simply were not getting along. So it wasn't too long into this expedition that the group of men were actually attacked by a group of Native Americans called the Arikara. This is where Hugh actually was first injured. He had actually been shot in the leg, which already made his life a little bit difficult, but it was nothing compared to what was about to come. So during this attack, a lot of the men were able to regroup and escape. And they had all actually decided to meet up at a place called Fort Kiowa. This is where a man named Andrew Henry, who was actually partners with the founder of this expedition, had decided to join the group. And from here, they were actually going to set out toward the Yellowstone River. So they're making their way over. And this is where Hugh encounters his really devastating attack. All the men were out. They were separated. Some were hunting in certain areas. They were hunting for different animals, looking for different things. So they weren't necessarily grouped together. And he didn't realize this, but he had actually stumbled upon a mother bear. And it was actually a grizzly bear who was with her cubs. So obviously right away, she goes into full on protective mode and rushes towards Hugh. Hugh had his rifle, which he was very, very attached to. This was like his most prized possession. So he shoots at the bear, but she didn't feel a thing. She didn't stop. She had so much adrenaline in her. She just kept charging at him. So he turns around and he tries to climb a nearby tree, but unfortunately he was too slow and the bear ran up to him bites him from behind, grabs him off the tree, slams him onto the ground, and literally just starts completely mauling him, like shredding him apart. There were reports from many of the men who saw what happened that the bear had actually grabbed onto him by his head and was shaking him violently. But Hugh somehow managed to maintain enough consciousness during this entire attack that he was able to pull out a knife and start stabbing the bear multiple, multiple times. It wasn't until some of the men who heard the commotion were able to run over and help Hugh actually kill the bear and let him go free. Once the bear had been killed, that's when the men noticed how badly Hugh had been attacked. And many of the men thought that these wounds were just impossible to survive. Regardless, Wanting to be positive and optimistic about the situation, the men decided to carry Hugh on a litter carrier. And I'll put a picture here so you guys can see what that is. They decided to carry him for the next two days in hopes of reaching the next town so maybe he could have a chance at living. Unfortunately, because they were carrying him, this actually ended up slowing down the pace of the group quite a lot. A decision was made by Andrew Henry, who had joined earlier, and he was looking for two volunteers to stay with Hugh until he died because they just really didn't think he was gonna make it. He was slowing them down and opening up the entire group for attack from either a Native American tribe or other wildlife. So two men volunteered. One of them was a younger teenager and one was an older man. And they were told by Andrew that he would pay them once they returned and caught up with the group but that they were to stay with Hugh until he died and bury him once he had passed. Now, the man in charge, Andrew Henry, had actually told them to make sure to bring back all of the tools and weapons that Hugh would no longer need if he had indeed passed as further proof to make sure that 
they had done what they were told to do and then they would get their pay. So as the men were digging the grave for Hugh, they claimed that, that they were actually attacked by the same group of Native Americans, the Arikara. So they said they grabbed their weapons, they grabbed everything they could and made a run for it. When they went back, this is the story that they told and they had told the leader that Hugh had died, but unfortunately they just weren't able to bury him because the attack happened right as they were about to do so. Obviously, that was not true. Hugh was not dead. What actually happened was, is that five days had passed and no one thought that Hugh was going to live past two days, let alone five. So at this point, the two men were getting a little bit restless. They were getting annoyed that Hugh wasn't going anywhere. So they were talking amongst themselves and decided that they would basically just abandon him there and let nature run its course. We know this happened because Hugh was in and out of consciousness, but he was able to overhear this conversation. And this is something that he remembered very, very clearly and was part of the reason why he was driven so deeply by revenge. So after five days, the men decided they had pretty much earned their money's worth and had done most of what they were told to do. So they covered Hugh with a large bear hide, took all of Hugh's tools, including his rifle, all of his equipment that he would basically need to survive out in the wilderness and placed them by a small pond or a spring underneath the berry bush and basically just left him for dead. When Hugh woke up, he was able to regain a decent level of consciousness. He quickly realized that he had been abandoned. He also realized that he had no tools and he was basically left for dead in the middle of an open field with very, very little around him to survive. At this point, he figured that he was approximately 200 miles away from Fort Kiowa, which was the nearest village at that time. Now, during this initial phase, he was able to kind of gauge as to how bad his wounds were. And this is where he realized that his leg had been broken, almost shattered really. And he had forced himself to place his broken bone back in by himself. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever broken a bone before, but it is extremely painful and to touch it, let alone put it back in its place by yourself without any sort of painkiller is excruciatingly painful. He had really, really deep wounds from when the bear bit him across his lower backside. And then he also had really, really deep um, claw wounds throughout his back. They were so big and so deep that they actually exposed part of his ribs. Now, when the bear was grabbing onto his head, she had actually scratched up and almost tore his entire throat apart. So he was losing a lot of blood from his throat and those wounds were actually so bad that it was reported that after he did heal, he actually never went back to speaking the same way as he had once done. So filled with rage and revenge, Hugh decided that he was not going to die. He wasn't going to let these two men win. Obviously he was in no condition to move. So he forced himself to lay there. All he could do at this point was cover himself with the bear hide that they had left behind and waited out until he was able to regain a little bit more strength so he can get moving. The first five days were rough. That's where he wasn't able to do much. He basically just laid there by the spring, by the little pond and survived off of the berry bushes nearby. And eventually he saw a rattlesnake come by. So he was able to kill it with a large rock and then kind of like grind up the meat very, very, very thinly enough to where he was able to get it down even though his throat was terribly ripped apart he was able to survive off of that for the next five days after that initial period he decides that he's feeling a little bit better and he's able to start crawling back to fort kiawa yes it's true what they showed in the movie he actually did crawl all the way back to civilization and he estimated that because he was going so slowly, he was able to say that he was probably doing approximately one mile a day. And throughout his time, as he crawled his way throughout the field, he would basically survive on whatever he came across that was on the ground. So that meant eating a lot of plants, a lot of roots, 
Um, definitely quite a lot of insects, bird eggs, and then any dead animals left behind by other wild animals. So a week into this entire ordeal, Hugh actually came across a pack of wolves eating what seemed to be a young calf. So he patiently waited for the wolves to finish up their meal. He knew he wasn't going to be able to fight them off or scare them off in a way for him to get the better portion of the meat. So he was forced to wait and wait and wait until the wolves were basically done with their kill. From there, he was able to survive off of that for a few more days. He actually was able to grab the carcass and drag it off to a more secluded area where he was able to regain a lot of energy from eating the raw meat. Now he ate this for as long as he could allegedly. He kept going at it until it was so rotten that it was no longer digestible. And now at this point, because he had gained a little bit more energy, he was able to go from crawling to limping. Now it took him several more weeks, but eventually he did make it to the Missouri River, just following the same pattern, eating whatever he found along the way and slowly crawling his way to civilization. Now, when he made it to the Missouri River, he actually came across the Lakota who were actually really welcoming to him and really nice to him. It's said that this tribe of Native Americans actually tried to help him heal a little bit. They poured vegetable broth on his, on his wounds and tried to clean them up as much as they could. And they even provided him with a hide boat, basically made out of dead animal skin to make his way down the river. This part is debated quite a bit, but it's said that he took hide boat and floated his way down the Missouri River up until he got to uh, the nearest village. By the time he made it to Fort Kiowa, he had spent six weeks out in the wilderness, something that everyone thought he would have never been able to do. It was very, very shocking to many people that he survived the type of wounds that he had. But nonetheless, he really was driven by the will to live and for revenge and of course for his beloved gun that he actually did make it back. Now, obviously he waited and recovered a little bit. He wanted to make sure that he was in decent condition to go out looking for the men who abandoned him. Now he found the first man, the younger of the two quite quickly, but it's said that he had a change of heart when he realized how young this guy was. He was approximately 16 or 17 years old and he had come to the conclusion that he had basically been persuaded or manipulated by the older man to abandon Hugh. So he let him go with a warning and told him to make better life choices and let him live. Now, he did not want the same fate for the next guy. He was on a hunt for him and there was going to be no stopping Hugh. Unfortunately, or fortunately for him anyways, this guy had actually joined the military as a soldier, which actually prevented Hugh from doing any harm to him. I mean, I'm, this rule is a little bit confusing to me because I mean, technically you're not allowed to do harm to people regardless of where they're enlisted or who they are. But apparently this rule said that you could he could not harm a soldier unless he was okay being killed by another soldier. So Hugh agreed and realized there was no point, but he did want his gun back. So in exchange for not killing him, the man actually did give back Hugh his gun. Now, like most survivors, Hugh wasn't going to let this incident stop him. He actually returned back to the same expedition for 10 more years and successfully completed all of them. It wasn't until 1833 where Hugh actually did end up dying and he died the way he lived. He died by getting attacked again by the Arikara tribe. So it's not a huge surprise that he died doing what he really did dedicate his entire life to. Now today, there's actually a very, very large monument. It's a very cool art piece um, by the Grand River where this entire story took place. It's kind of set as a reminder to people He's a local legend in the area. I'll put a picture of it here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. People are really excited about this story and it seems that the local people won't let this story die, almost making him go down as a legend. So that does it for today's video. Let me know what you guys think about this story. Let me know what you guys think about Hugh Glass. Do you think that there are many more details that we're missing? Are there any other survival stories that you guys think I should talk about? Let me know in the comments below. I do like reading your comments. I do like reading your suggestions. And if you enjoyed today's video, then please consider subscribing or hitting the like button. That does it for me today and we will see you in the next video.